Good morning and welcome to our Let Review 2023. In this video, I will be presenting social studies and its related topics. Okay, so question number one. It can be defined as the integrated study of the social sciences and humanities to promote civic competence. A. Civics. B. Political sciences. C. Laws. And D. Social sciences. Our answer is letter D. Social sciences. Okay? So, uh, this is our uh, explanation. No? Uh, civics, letter D. Okay, so civics is a study of rights and duties of citizenship. And then political science is concerned with the theory and practices of politics. Civics and political sciences are disciplines that fall under the umbrella term of social sciences. So the answer is social sciences. Question number two, what do you call these features which involves the combining and synthesizing of the disciplines in the social sciences so that they are better suited to solve the problem? A. Interculturalism. B. Interdisciplinarity. And C. Multiculturalism. And D. Multidisciplinarity. Okay, the answer is letter B. Okay interdisciplinarity okay so letter b our answer the different disciplines in the social sciences can be combined to synth synthesize broad perspective example geography political sciences can be combined into ge geopolitics to study politics and territory Question number three, the school fulfill the rule of blank, wherein they, they teach children to actively participate in larger societies. A, acculturation, B, education, C, enculturation, and D, socialization. The answer is letter D, okay, socialization, okay, why? Because... Uh, socialization is the process in which individuals learn how to acquire knowledge, skills, and values of their society. The school is one institution that teaches this knowledge, skills, and values to the students. Okay, so we are uh, letter D. Yung sagot natin dito. Okay, so let's go to question number four. The students in Ms. Tamayo's civics class talk about governance based on their discussion of the Philippine Constitution in whom does a sovereignty reside and from whom does all government authority emanate? A. The appointed officials. B. Elected officials. C. The Filipino people. And D. The member of the cabinet. The answer is letter C, the Filipino people, okay? So according, yes, it's letter C because according to Article 2, Section 1 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution, sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. Number five, in class, we often conduct competitions. Okay, so what is considered a good reason for engaging in competitions? A, achievement is stimulated. B, cooperation is reduced. C, inequalities are highlighted. And D, stress is heightened. The answer is letter A, achievement is stimulated. Okay, so... Positive competition promotes hard work and effort to reach a goal. Question number six, which group is considered the nursery of human nature? A, classmates, B, family, C, peer group, and D, play group. The answer is letter B, okay, family. So in most societies, the family is the most basic institution for the socialization of children. Number seven, all of these are reasons why, why the United Nations was established, except to, okay, blank, A, improve the state of health, B, prevent wide-scale conflict, C, promote economic progress, and D, spread the word of God. The answer is letter D, okay? spread the word of God. So the UN does not promote any but respects all religion. The term word of God is used most exclusively by Christians. Number eight, 
what is the best indicator of quality education as invoked in the Constitution? Generation of reliable measurements, blank. Okay. Okay. So, the, uh, letter B on cohort survival rate, C on dropout rate, and D on participation rate, and A of educational outcomes. So, the answer is letter A. Okay. A po yung sagot natin dito. Effectiveness is the best is best measured by outcomes or result. Number nine, what are considered major goals of multicultural education? A, catering the, to diversity of learners. Two, considering social, social class and ethnic groups. Three, providing equal opportunities to education. The answer is letter D, one, two, and three. Okay, so so this is our basis. So multicultural education aims to create equal educational opportunities for students from diverse racial, ethnic, social class, and cultural groups. Number 10. A teacher, as a teachers, as teachers, we need to correct the attitude of some arrogant students who keep on seeing their own way of doing things as the right way and everybody else's as wrong. What do you call this kind of attitude? A. Cultural pluralism. B. Cultural relativism. C. Ethnocentrism. And D. Multiculturalism. The answer is ethnocentrism. Letter C. Okay. So this is our basis. Ethnocentrism is the tendency to believe that one's ethnic or cultural group is centrally important. Number 11, violation of human rights is a violation of the blank of persons. A, dignity, B, emotions, C, freedom, and D, intelligence. The answer is letter D, dignity. So the violation of human rights is also a violation of the dignity of persons. Okay, so dignity signifies that humans have an innate to respect and ethical treatment to others. Okay, number 12. To achieve quality education, teachers should be accountable in A. Grading performance of learners. B. Reporting the performance of learners to parents. C. Reporting the performance of learners to the school head and stakeholders. And D. The effective attainment of specified learning objectives and outcomes. The answer is letter D. Effective attainment of specified learning objectives and outcomes. Okay. So, the answer is letter D because one of the primary responsibilities of teachers is to make, make sure that learning objectives are achieved and that results are satisfactory. Okay. Number 13, which of the following statements reflects a strong culture? A, has a definite, has a network of communications. B, has definite organizational core values. C, has high standards of performance. And D, has informal rules of behavior. The answer is letter B, has definite organizational core values. Okay, so why? Why is letter B yung sagot natin? Okay, so let us... Uh, no, no, the school's culture is reflected in its core values, which are embodied in its mission and vision statements. So each organization has this. No, okay, so number 14 with the promotion of social justice in mind, uh, which does not belong to the group a absolute right over property. B, diffusion of wealth. C, equitable access to education. And D, profit sharing. The answer is letter A, absolute right over property. So, social justice refers to the idea of creating a social society or institutions that is based on the principles of equality and solidarity. So, absolute rights over property implies ownership and enjoyment for one's person or group only. Okay, so number 15. The UNESCO is an international organization promoting which program? Okay, of the UN. A, 
competence, science, nature. B, education, science, culture. C, nationality, unity, science. And D, unity, organization, education. The answer is letter B, education, science, and culture. So, this is our basis. Bakit B yung sagot natin? The acronym UNESCO means the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. So, cover po lahat, no? Education, science, and culture. Number 15. Ah, number 16. When school's mission says that it offers a holistic approach to our education, which goal in peace education are they helping to achieve? A. Friendship among different cultural groups. B. Full development of the human personality. C. Promotion of understanding and tolerance. And D. Respect for human rights. The answer is letter B. Full development of the human personality. Holistic approach. Okay. So, holistic education does not only provide students with skills that will tackle the academic rigors but also prepare them for the challenges of life. From the word holistic approach, it is the full development of the human personality. Number 17. When students in Mr. Pariha's Asian history class visited mosques and temples and interviewed the people inside, in a way, he is promoting blank. A. Appreciation of different cultures. B. Awareness of social differences. C. Respect for human rights. And D. Tolerance towards other religions. The answer is letter D. Tolerance towards other religions, mosques and temples, okay? So mosques and temples are places of worship and are connected to certain religions, okay? So 18, what makes the social sciences a science? A, it uses a lot of theories. B. It explores the different aspects of the human society. C. It uses empirical methods in research. And D. It is a systematic body of knowledge. The answer is letter C. It uses empirical methods in research. Okay, let us know why. Okay, so see yung sagot natin because science is oftentimes defined as a systematic body of knowledge. Social science explores the different aspects of human society and uses rigorous, empirical, okay, empirical methods when conducting, when conducting research. 19. Jose Rizal explained that we can partly attribute the Filipinos' tendency to be indolent to blank A, their intelligence, B, the climate, the climate of the country, C, the influence of our Asian neighbors, and D, the poor economic condition of the society. Ang sagot dito is letter B, the climate of the society. So, uh, Jose Rizal in his work, on the indolence of the Filipino, tried to correct the perception of Spaniards that Filipinos are lazy by explaining that Filipinos are wise enough to till all day under the heat of the burning tropical sun. Number 20. Which discipline is not usually associated with humanities? Okay, A. History. B. Literature, C. Theater, and D. Visual Arts. The answer is letter A. History. So, the humanities focuses on human condition. Okay. Unlike the social sciences that uses empirical methods in research, the study of humanities uses analytical speculative methods. History, on the other hand, needs evidences and documents for study. 21. Black education aims to prepare students for a particular relationship with one another and with the political community. Okay, A. Environmental, B. Democratic, C. Civic, and D. Citizenship. The answer is letter D. Citizenship. Okay, why? 
So uh, citizenship education enables people to make their own decisions and to take responsibility for their own lives and their communities, thereby creating a democratic society. 22. Giving a boloy to a bereaved family, hostility, and the bayanihan prove which Filipino trait? A. Adaptability. B. Faith and religiosity. C. Hardworking and industry. And D. Pakikipag kapwa tao. The answer is letter D. Pakikipag kapwa tao. Okay, let us know why. Letter D, yung sagot natin, kasi kapwa denotes togetherness. Again, abuloy means contribution and bayanihan means communal unity as well as hospitality. So, all illustrates togetherness. Pakikipagkapwa tao. Okay? So, 23. The students in PAM, okay, PHM class were tasked to Note down the Spanish influence in our arts and culture. Which process explains this presence of Spanish culture? A. Cultural diffusion. B. Inheritance. C. Interbreeding. And D. Evolution. The answer is letter A. Cultural diffusion. Why? Letter A yung sagot natin kasi cultural diffusion is used to describe the spread of cultural items from one culture to another. Number 24, the blank context plays a role in when the medium of instruction used in class is a hindrance for students learning. A. Cultural, B. Economic, C. Political, and D. Social. The answer is letter A. Cultural. Okay? The language of instruction falls under the con cultural context. So the Cultural context plays ro a role when the medium of instruction used in class is a hindrance for students' learning. 25. Children learn how to open coconuts and do other common chores and uh, coconut farm. In this instance, culture is transmitted through a acculturation. B. Assimilation, C. Enculturation, and D. Immersion. The answer is immersion. Okay, so immersion is the mingling with a community to attain a common goal or interest. 26. On which concept is the cross-cultural undertaking advocated by anthropologists and sociologists based in order to Prevent ethnocentrism. A. Acculturation. B. Cultural relativism. C. Global solidarity. And D. Ethnocentrism. The answer is cultural relativism. Okay, why? Uh, cultural relativism is the principle that an individual human beliefs and activities should be understood by others in terms of that individual's own culture. It is the and the antithesis of ethnocentrism. 27. The widening horizon concept states that the study of human beings should begin with examples from blank environment. A. Local. B. National. C. International. And D. All of this. The answer is local. So the widening horizon starts from experiences within the local community and moves on towards national issues and finally into the international arena. 28. The central idea of this curriculum design is that each social science discipline carries a basic structure of concepts that can be organized to make learning more meaningful. A. Fused. B. Holistic. C. Spiral. And D. Widening horizon. The answer is spiral. Letter C. So, spiral curriculum lets the students revisit a subject matter's content at the different levels of development of the subject matter being studied. 29. Which among the following are examples of material culture? A. Material culture yung tanong. 
Okay? So, A, clothing. B, folkways. C, morse. And D, sentiments. The answer is, of course, clothing. Okay? So, clothing is a material culture that is tangible. More sentiments and folkways are immaterial or intangible. 30. Which statement does not describe the homo habilis? A. Stone tools were discovered alongside their remains. B. They have more technical knowledge compared to Australopithecus. C. Their body structure suggests that they walk upright. D. Their... Uh, there were signs that they knew how to manipulate fire. The answer is letter D, okay? Which statement does not describe? So, letter D. The homo habilis or handyman woke upright, used stone tools, and were smaller than modern humans. There is a lack of evidence, however, that they know how to manipulate fire. Number 31. What proves that many early civilizations were theocratic? A. The people created temples for their deities. B. The people usually had patron god or goddess. C. The leaders were usually the high priest or seen as representative of the gods. And D. The people worshipped many gods and goddesses. The answer is letter C. The leaders were usually the high priest or seen as representative of the gods. Okay, so ito yung basis natin. Theocracy is a form of government that is governed by the divine or whose officials are divinely guided. 32. While studying the violence in the Middle East for their contemporary issues class, the teacher reminded the class that the first civilization is located in Iraq. Which civilization is this? A. Akkadian, B. Babylonian, C. Chaldean, and D. Sumerian. The answer is letter D. Sumerian. So, the Sumerian civilization is the first civilization in the world. Their remains can be found in the modern-day Iraq. Okay? So, 33. The first people who widely used bronze tools were the blank. A. Sumerians. B. Ladians. C. Hebrews. And D. Amarians. The answer is letter A. Sumerians. Okay, so the development of the first civilization is aided by the widespread use of bronze tools and weapons. The Sumerians, as mentioned earlier, was the first group of people to qualify a civil civilization. Number 34. What is the study of the Earth's surface and physical features? A. Topography, B. Geology, C. Geography, and D. Cartography. The answer is geography, okay? So, the topography focuses on the Earth's surface. Geography is the study of the Earth. Geology is the study of the processes by which the Earth is shaped and changed. Cartography, on the other hand, is the study of making maps, okay? So, 35, what body of water was uh, very important for the development of ancient Greek civilization. A. Tibet River. B. Mediterranean Sea. C. Atlantic Ocean. And D. Aegean Ocean. The answer is Aegean Ocean. Okay? So the islands where the first civilization in Greece emerged, Minoans and Mycenaeans, are located in Aegean Sea. Okay? And 36. What body of water borders? Europe, Africa, and Asia. A. Black Sea. B. Indian Ocean. C. Mediterranean Sea. And D. Pacific Ocean. Ang sagot ay letter C. Mediterranean Sea. So, Mediterranean Sea borders Europe in the north, Africa in the south, and Asia in the east. 37. Which country is not a member of the ASEAN? Okay, so A, Cambodia, B, Laos, D, Singapore, and C, Taiwan. The answer is Taiwan. Taiwan is located in the East Asia. Laos, Singapore, and Cambodia are located in the South East Asia and are members of the Association of the Southeast Asian Nation or ASEAN. 38. Which term refers 
to all life zones, plants, animals, other organisms, and the physical environment in a particular area. A. Tundra. B. Savanna. C. Rainforest. And D. Ecosystem. The answer is ecosystem. Okay? Tundra, savanna, and rainforest are examples lang, no? They are just an example of ecosystem. 39. Who was the lawmaker, chief executive, and judge of pre-Hispanic barangay? A. Bathala. D, B. Dato. C. Laon. And D. Maharlika. The answer is Dato. Okay? So, Bathala was the supreme god of the ancient Tagalogs. Maharlika is a Filipino term for nobility. And Laon was a deity of the ancient Visayas. Number 40. What form of government was the pre-Hispanic barangay? A. Aristocracy, B. Democracy, C. Monarchy, and D. Oligarchy. The answer is monarchy. Okay? In monarchy, the power is held by a single person, such as the dato. Democracy is, a, is from government wherein all citizens can participate in decision making. Oligarchy involves only the decision of a few people. And aristocracy is a government ruled by the elite. Okay? Twen, uh, 41. Who were, the f who were those never really conquered by the Spaniards? A. The Elecans led by Silang. B. The Boholanos led by Daguhoy. C. The Igorots of the Cordillera. And D. The Muslims of Southern Philippines. The answer is letter D. The Muslims of the Southern Philippines. Okay? So, although different groups revolted and resisted and were successful for a time, only the Muslims of Mindanao were able to hold off the Spaniards. 42. During their discussion of the Nolimitangere, Nolimitangere, the students debated on the identity of the Filipino. During much of the Spanish occupation, how were the, the natives of the Philippines called? A. Indus, B. Insularis, Insularis, C. Peninsularis, and D. Principalia. The answer is Indus. <coughs> okay, so the derogat term Indio was used to call the natives. Pensularis refers to Spaniards who were born in Spain and live in the Philippines. Insularis refers to the Spaniards who were born in the Philippines. And Principalia referred to the members of the noble class. 43. Which was well accepted by the Filipinos under Spanish Rule. Okay. A. Practice of Polo. B. Payment of Buis. C. Representation in the Cortes. And D. Employment of the Reduction. Okay. The answer is Employment of Reduction. Okay. So, Reduction were settlement founded by the Spanish colonizers with the purpose of assimilating indigenous populations. The natives were attracted to the religious and economic activities within these settlements and sought protection from Muslim raiders in these towns. 44. Filipino students are taught to emulate the young Jose Rizal who was everything listed below except A. Loner B. Motivated C. Reflective D. Very Observant The answer is Loner. Okay? Hindi po Loner si Rizal. Okay? So Rizal's, Rizal's letter as well as the people who knew him did not give any indication that he was a loner. 45. Rizal's greatest resentment during his Student days that's motivated him to work harder was the blank. A. Positivity. Passivity, rather. Passivity of Filipino students. Prevailing discrimination. Unequal treatment of students by the Jesuits. And the use of Spanish as a medium of instruction. The answer is the prevailing discrimination. Huh? Results greatest resentment, prevailing discrimination. Okay, so Rizal left the University of Santo Tomas because he felt the professor were discriminating the Filipino students. 
46, which work of Rizal was said to be an angry man's personal debate on whether or whether or not a violent revolution would solve the Filipino crisis during the Spanish times. A. A la Juventud Filipina. B. El Filibusterismo. C. Honto al Pasig. And D. No Limitangheri. The answer is letter B. El Filibusterismo. Okay? So the plot El Filibusterismo. Turismo reflected Rizal's view on the pros and cons of revolution. Nolimitangheri exposed the evils of Spanish-run government in the Philippines. Honto al Pasig was a poem about the Pasig. A la Juventud Filipina was a poem dedicated to the Filipino students of the University of Santo Tomas. 47. Which is the historical development of the Philippines? A. It has been an independent nation. B. It has been an independent nation ever since. C. It has not achieved full independence from the very beginning. And D. It has evolved from colony to a fully independent nation. So the answer is letter D. Okay, so the Philippines was colonized by Spain, USA, and Japan, but has been an independent nation since July 4, 1946. Okay, so 48, in the hostility between the Filipinos and Americans, who is recorded to have, if, to have fired the first shots? A, a Chinese trader, B, a Filipino merchant, C, a Filipino soldier, and D, an American soldier. The answer is letter D, an American soldier. So, Private William Grayson, an American soldier, shot a Filipino sentry. This started the Filipino-American War. 49. Who opposed American rule and wrote the rise and fall of the Philippine Republic to exhort the Filipinos to keep fighting for independence. A. Apolinario Mabini. B. Claro M. Recto. C. Pedro Paterno. And D. Sergio Osminia. The answer is Apolinario Mabini. Okay. So Apolinario Mabini served as chief advisor for Aguinaldo and wrote the rise and the fall of Philippine Republic as the Filipino fell under American rule. American rule. Okay, so the last number, which is number 50, which is the independence law of the Philippines. A. Copper Act, B. Jones Law, C. Harry House Cutting Act, and D. Tidings McDuffie Law. The answer is letter D. Tidings McDuffie Law. Okay. Why? Let us know. The Tidings McDuffie Act was official known as the Philippine Independence Act and subsequently enacted as a law. Okay? So the Jones Law was known as the Philippine Autonomy Law. The Copper Act is also known as Philippine Organic Act. The Harry Hoss Cutting Act was the first law passed for decolonization of the Philippines. Okay, so thank you so much for listening and I hope that you will play this video again and again so you will really familiarize the answers, okay? So thank you so much and have a great day ahead. Future licensed professional teachers. God bless everyone.